Welcome everybody. Uh, we got the uh, Instagram going on mine, Future Assassins. We got Funk and Focus, YouTube going. We're here at Urban Artistry Dance Academy I'm with Junius Brickhouse, and uh, we're gonna get a little conversation going today. This is the seventh episode, or it might be the eighth actually, uh, for the Funk and Focus Urban Dance and Dialogue series. Um, today we're just gonna be talking a little bit about our story together and um, the history of urban artistry and assassins and what Junius is doing with Next Level and talk about popping and it's pretty much just wide open. We'll be talking about a little bit of everything. So um, we're going to start by going into some, some of our story and uh, feel free for this episode to write your questions or your comments and when we, when we break from what we're talking about, we'll check out the comments and the questions, but feel free to ask anything. Um, it's pretty, pretty open. We're open to whatever questions you guys got and whatever comments and things like that, we'll just be addressing everything. So, nice, what's up? What's up, man, what's good? Nothing much. Nice to have you on, finally. Yeah, man. You need to. Got me, you got me. Got me to come in and, and sit down and in, a, in our studio. I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? We're, we're, Isn't that strange? Yeah. yeah, it's like we're in the dance room right now, but it sort of doesn't feel like it from this perspective. Mm -hmm. But behind everything is, you know, where we boogie usually. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Let's... Yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that you uh, put this together so we can sit down and chat a little bit. I know we talk a lot amongst ourselves and you know we build on the regular but like to uh sit down and, and have a conversation together yeah you know in front of our extended communities it's pretty cool so yeah for sure so thanks yeah and and you're someone that i've learned a lot from throughout the year so i feel like the knowledge you've given me is awesome that we can share some of that too in these types of conversations and your experiences with the general public so people can you know think of things a little bit different or get some conversation started and cool. you know so anyway our story a little bit about myself and Junius we met in about 2006 I believe mm -hmm. um, yeah what about the time yeah um, in 2007 when I did Just Debut he was there and we were we were talking he was giving me advice and things uh, I started learning from Rashad in 2006 so Rashad's mentor is Junius, and uh, that's how I met you through Rashad, pretty mm -hmm. much. And um, you and Rashad already had Urban Artistry and Assassins working here, and um, I ended up joining in 2008, and then I moved back from school in 2009, and then we really started to, to hang out more. Yeah. And I, um, I definitely feel like there's a lot of things that when I met you and, and Rashad, I started to learn a lot more about like the culture and the history of the dances, community building, race issues, um, politics in art, um, cipher etiquette, all these things that people weren't really talking about, you know, mm -hmm. even those words like culture and community, people weren't even like talking about those things. <laughs> like those weren't even like <laughs> common language. Yeah. So, you know, I, my whole like mission and a lot of the things I believe are based off of what you've kind of built with urban artistry. And, um, and so I just wanted to, to first just ask you what it was like or what you were doing before you came to DC. I mean, just tell a little bit of your story, but mostly like what it was like coming to DC and seeing the scene, what it was like and what you felt like you wanted to create here and do here. Yeah, so I think uh, the context, first of all, excuse my voice, I'm sounding like a broke-ass Lou Rawls up here <laughs> and got a little cold. Um, so to understand like what sparked Assassin's DC and urban artistry is to understand where I, where I came from, mm -hmm. you know, before here. Um, and uh, in 97... Um, I was in the army and I got stationed in, in Heidelberg, Germany. And um, for those who are, you know, familiar with that scene, you know, man, it was it was a lot going on mm -hmm. during that time. And uh, going there as a dancer already, you know, um, and as an artist, you know, I 
plugged right into that community. I think this, the second, the first day I was there, I met uh, Little Rock from Southside Rockers, mm -hmm. and Little Rock uh, introduced me to to Thomas Special Effects from uh, Out of Control, and Thomas introduced me to everybody else. Yeah. You know, like and. Uh, within a week, you know, I'm, I'm hanging out with Southside Rockers, like Unique Wizards, like members of Out of Control, you know, and um, Thomas and, and Scotty were like very key in my yeah. growth in that scene. Like, mm -hmm. you know, those guys always hooked me up, you know, and they didn't treat me like, you know, the American GI, you know, who's always hanging out, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I was trying to speak the language, you know, I was in the clubs with them, I was in uh, the, the House of Yugen with them, like training, like just, you know, trying to understand these people who seem to love, like, this, these dances and these cultures that, that I was a part of. And I was just dumbfounded, like, it was really strange, you know, I, I grew up dancing culturally. Yeah. You know, like and popping and locking and, and hip hop and and house, you know, these were like my cultural expressions, mm -hmm. you know. So here I was like in Europe right now and there were, you know, German people, Turkish people, you know, like uh, Iranian people, all types of people explaining my cultural heritage to me. <laughs> <laughs> like from their lens and it right. was like and and frankly a lot of them knew a lot more than I did mm -hmm. you know like because I was you know when you grow up doing a thing it you're just a part of it yeah. you know like and I never thought that it was something that the rest of the world was into right like and these were people who weren't from this culture and they treated it with respect yeah. you know and and that really strengthened our bond I think yeah. you know because I felt like these people respected me. So it wasn't just what they did for me, it was like how they treated me yeah. in their space. And uh, man, I had, I had eight great years there. Yeah. Like eight years of like ground pounding and like battling and you know, doing shows, going on tours. Like dude, I just had a blast, you know? And uh, in 2005, um, I decided to come back. You know, I've been around, been away for a while. Yeah. You know, and um, my mom was, you know, like sick and, you know, my dad wasn't doing too well. So like, I was like, you know, let me go back home, yeah. you know, and spend some time with them. Um, when I got here, you got to understand, I was like on this high yeah. of like being in Europe and just having like this blast, you know, yeah. of, of a good time. I mean, so many people, man, I, I can't even mention all the names of all the people who were influential, you know, like uh, in my growth. Yeah. And coming back here, I was kind of like, what do I do with all this mm -hmm. information, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what do I do with all this information, you know? So I was already plugged in and I was still touring and still like, you know, going to jams and supporting the culture. Um, but I was hanging out in the clubs with young people out here like who are looking at me as like somebody who has experience you know and I kind of felt like um, I owed them the same respect and the same uh, kindness that that I received yeah. you know I mean that's to some people that's common courtesy but for me like it was kind of like um, well I had some big shoes to fill you know had a lot of people that I admired and I knew that they were looking at me, you know. And um, yeah, so I, I came back here and I was already a member of Assassin's Germany and uh, I was thinking about starting a chapter here, yeah. you know, and um, I just needed some students. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's it. So I just started going out to the clubs, man, and I just started like, like cypher hawking, you know, yeah. like ciphering with people, battling people, like, and introducing myself and spending time with people, Yeah, you know, and um, actually my first, my first week back um, in the States, there was a, a couple of guys that I, that I knew, 
um, from 2001 uh, when I got out of the Army and I came back home for a few months. And that was uh, Tippy and Looney. Like, I knew those guys, and uh, we had hung out, and I was showing them uh, some uh, popping basics and locking basics, and those guys started coming up. Well, they met Rashad yeah. in, like, 2003, I think, okay. you know? So when I came back, I called them, and they were like, hey, yeah, you know, we got this new member in our crew. Like, his name's Rashad. And I met Rashad, and, you know, we just hit it off, you yeah. know? Like, we just hit it off, like, really good. And um, it felt good to be able to take the information that I had and pass it on to other people. Yeah. So that that's a long story to, to say this. You know, um, I felt like I had a responsibility, like, um, not just to the people who supported me, yeah. like, all those years, but um, I also had um, a cultural responsibility, yeah. like, to do a little bit more for people, like... Um, who were trying to do the best that they could. Yeah. And that and that's what we had. So you had people in clubs, like getting down, mm. hella talented, but where do they put that? Yeah. You know, and everybody knows that's ever tried to to get a job or try to like out in the non artistic world or in the artistic world. Yeah. You know, like you need a one up. You need to know somebody. People were like, who do you know? Yeah. And a lot of dancers, that's that's what they want to know. They don't Sometimes they don't care what you do or how well you can do it. They just want to know who you know. Yeah. How, do, how do you create a network? And if I could do that, if I could provide social capital for my students and combine that with some type of social responsibility like and, and accountability, mm -hmm. you know, a code, you know, yeah. maybe that we could, we could build something fairly strong. So... Um, Yes. When when I decided to do uh, uh, urban artistry, it was mostly out of me problematizing like uh, what was going on yeah. like okay. in DC yeah. at, at the moment. Like so, basically in in DC there were a lot of dance institutions, right? Like yeah. dance schools, yeah. like uh, dance companies you know, um, that came out of dance schools. Um, and, but none of them were doing, like, urban dance culture. Yeah. You know, like, and if they were, it was from a very, like, uh, it was just... <laughs> just bad. <laughs> 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 My mama said, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. No, um, I, I felt that that we weren't represented well. Right. Like that a lot of people that I knew uh, internationally, like and across the United States, if they were looking at what was going on and I was, you know, okaying that and not saying anything and I was vouching for that, mm -hmm. that uh, I would have misrepresented, you know, myself. They would have felt misrepresented. So I said, let's not complain about it. You know, let's do something about it. Yeah. So. A few people that were um, were assassins at that time. I said, "Look, you know, let's go ahead and let's put this thing together. That's more like a dance company, mm -hmm. you know, like um, so that we can reach out to different communities and do what we're doing for each other on a larger scale." Right. And uh, yeah, that's that's how uh, Urban Artistry got started. And you know, um, yeah, dude, it's. Since 2005, man, we've just been yeah. been inching right along, man. When I uh, when I started dancing in the area, um, I think like the year 2000 was the first event I went to, mm -hmm. and it was like b-boy events only, um, b-boy yeah. battles only. Um, poppers would be there; it'd be like a rare thing to find another popper at oh, one yeah. of those events. Um, I never saw lockers. I never saw hip hop or house dancers. I don't know if they were, maybe they were in the clubs and I was just too young at that time. Mm -hmm. But I felt like I moved away in 2005 to California, came back in 2009. And actually it was so much different from when I left to when I came back in 2009. And uh, I feel like, you know, there was all style battles. There was mm -hmm. classes for popping, you know, and locking. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was, 
it was like urban artistry pushing that forefront um, and and creating those things and I think it, it kind of pushed a lot of other people to follow suit and say oh we need different styles for with classes and and that whole idea of like respecting each style for its culture and where it comes from and its city and its history and and giving it like its due respect so mm-hmm. I, I felt like a lot had already changed just based on that like I saw more styles and there yeah. was like competitions for different styles and a lot changed from when I left to when I came back in 2009 was was there like more things yeah to man to and- that was that was the goal like the goal was to was to have people to look at these art forms and and understand something about them that's deeper than what they enjoy to do. Yeah. You know, people were like, oh, yeah, I like this style. It's really fun. You know, people like me and clap for me when I do it. But what else is there, man? Like, what are you mimicking? Like, you know, like, what's the history behind that? Yeah. You know, and I also wanted to create this idea of, like, dance pedagogy, you know, like, and not just dance as festival, Mm -hmm. you know, like, we're just getting down, we're just partying, Mm -hmm. you know, like, how were people doing house dance, you know, in Alabama in 1985? Yeah. Like, what was their way of doing it? Yeah. You know? Let's look at all these different communities globally. Yeah. See how they how they participate in these art forms. Yeah. Let's document them. Yeah. You know, and now we're creating our own canon. Yeah. You know, we're creating, you know, like something that everybody can be a part of, you know, yeah. and not just this one way of thinking, yeah. I'm from this place and this is the way we do it, and because I feel like that's the best, yeah. I'm only going to promote that. Yeah. You know, like no, let's let's come to the table. You know, let's find out what everyone's doing, mm-hmm. and we can celebrate. You know, and you know, I would like to say that that was a lot of fun, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't like you know, we had a lot of conflict with that. You know, like the first thing that I did when I wanted to start Urban Archery is like. I went to all the cats I knew from the clubs. Mm. I mean, I'm not talking about, like, since I had moved back. I mean, like, since I was a kid, you know, like in 1989, 1990, coming up here, going to clubs in D.C. from Virginia Beach. All those guys, like, I went to them, and I was like, hey, you know, I got this idea. Mm. I'm doing this thing. And, like, you know, some people said, yeah, cool, and didn't show up at all. And some people outright said no. Some yeah. people told me it was stupid mm. and that it wouldn't work, you know. Crazy. Yeah. And, you know, but I was I was focused. And it wasn't just about me because at that point I had these young people looking to me for professional growth and guidance, right? Yeah. Dude, I, what am I going to do? I can't be like, oh, yeah, OG said, like, it's stupid, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do it. I was like, oh, no, that's okay. I respect that, you yeah. know. And some of those people, you know, fast forward, came around and, you know, like, have always supported us and been really helpful at us, helpful, helping us continue yeah. to do what we're doing. So, but I, I need to say that. That wasn't, it wasn't easy at all. Like, right. and there's still some relationships right now and still some, some problems that we have between communities because of that, you know? Mm-hmm. I understand some of it, right? Like, you have a way of doing business, you have a way that you operate in your culture, and then... Somebody comes into your community, like, and they got this new thing, and it's different, you know. And I know it's scary. Like, in most places, when 15 brown people walk into a spot and start throwing down in the cypher on the floor, most people are like, hell going on here, you know. And that's straight talk, you know. And it was like that here. A lot of the schools and the groups were very segregated, you know by race and social class, yeah. you know? But we had something different going on. We had all these different types of people, and we had women, mm. like, getting down. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> We had women dancing, like, and, and battling guys, and, like, and our goal was to be good as artists, right. not good for girls or yeah. good for guys, you yeah. know? So 
we had a, a lot of different things about us like that, you know, made it necessary for us to create an environment where we can get that out, yeah. you know, where we could strut and show what it is that we did. You know, well, you were talking about a little bit earlier about like the appreciation for the different uh, areas and respecting like, um, you know, like house dance in Alabama, these places that these unsung heroes, these unsung communities like I was just going to mention how much of that type of mentality is actually in what me and Rashad represent as poppers, mm -hmm. like the Book of Styles event, a style mm -hmm. that respects all of the styles and the contributions from all the different cities mm -hmm. equally and doesn't put one on a platform as the end all be all popping style that yep. is the thing, you know, and saying this is great here, this is great here. And, you know, trying to connect with those communities, like that mentality from Urban Archie, connecting with the people of those communities and not just like uh, learning one move and then saying you're a bopper or learning one move and saying you're a strutter. Mm -hmm. um, and even like this show, like the fact of like documentation and preservation, all these ideas that came through urban artistry are totally driving, you know, the Funk and Focus program and our events and what we represent as poppers. But I was just gonna ask you if you could touch a little bit on what the process of like inspiring Rashad was like. Um, did he see you as a, a popper? Did style not matter? What was the, the mentorship <laughs> like? Yeah, so, like, if if you could imagine, like, me at one time knowing more than Rashad, like, that's what it was like, <laughs> you know? With popping. Yeah, with popping. popping. Yeah, because Rashad's killing right now. But, you know, I think Rashad was like, and I'm going to put him out there for a second. Don't get <laughs> mad at me, brother. Like, Rashad was like a lot of people, like... Everybody has that thing inside, you know, that, 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 that we'll call talent, you know, like, and if, and all they need is somebody to, to believe in them, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody to support them, mm -hmm. you know, like, if you can help people respect themselves and what they have and what they bring to the table, man, dude, you can, you can teach them anything. You know, like, and they will respect other people's cultures and what other people bring to the table. So you create this, there's this learning that happens. And you put these people in the world that, like, are, like, learning from each other and interacting with each other. And they're not going to let you put down what they know because they respect it. You know, they respect themselves, right. you know. Like, and they're not going to be disrespectful to what you bring to the table because they don't want you doing it to them. So, you know, you have that thing going. And Rashad and I started just like that. You know, it was really like, you know, these are the things I know. I know them to this degree. Yeah. You know, I can teach you this and I can point you in the right direction. Yeah. You know, with other people who knows things. But more than anything, I want you to meet my family. Yeah. I want you to meet the people who inspire me. Mm. Like, and the reason why I'm here doing this with you. Yeah. So that's why I started introducing everybody Two like Assassins Germany, yeah. like the guys from Style Cracks, like the guys from Out of Control, like, you know, all of my all of my network, Damon Frost, you know, like I was just introducing people and, and trying to show them, look, you come from something. Right. Like you ain't you know, I'm not just throwing information at you. This yeah. is time tested and it's yeah. connected with people. So a lot of blood, sweat and years, yeah. you know? So like that was, that relationship was um, a very easy one. You know, it was a very easy one. Like um, it only got tough, like everything when he and you guys start doing better. You know, when, you know, more money, more problems. You know, when people start stepping up, then it gets a little bit complicated in the world because, you know, everybody's seeing what uh, the kind of artists that you guys are becoming, you know. But, dude, that was, that was a, a really great relationship. Rashad, you know, he's been a good friend, like, all these years and, you know, a good student, 
you know, like, and, you know, I'm learning from him, mm. you know, like, and you know how it is. We all learn from each other. Yeah. You know, it's like we never want to hold each other back, you know, like I don't need to be like this guy yeah. that's always telling you guys what it is you need to do. Yeah. Like sometimes, you know, I can follow, you know, leaders should be good followers too, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I wanted to also ask you about um, just your fields of practice right now, like mm -hmm. what you're working on right now, um, what you're part of. Yeah, man. Um, so in looking at um, movement and what we're doing in urban dance culture, you know, like I've been inspired to look at the movement forms that come before, yeah. you know, like uh, hip hop culture. Yeah. you know, or urban dance culture. So, you know, I also um, play harmonica, and um, I, I dance in a, in a group called Phil Wiggins Blues House Party. Yeah. A lot of my research is in movement in the African-American South, yeah. and uh, particularly forms of movement like buck dancing. Yeah. You know, so um, that's been really great for me. Like, I really loved it. I really love it and I enjoy doing it. It keeps me balanced, you know. And now I, I currently direct uh, a program called Next Level, yeah. which is a hip hop diplomacy program. Yeah. Like, yeah. So um, we go to many different countries and work with local partners in US embassies and consulates, like to teach arts education, yeah. um, entrepreneurship, and conflict transformation. Yeah. So, yeah, and I was uh, I was a part of the team Egypt mm -hmm. uh, for Next Level program, and it, it was a really really great experience. I learned a lot from it. Um, the idea of like hip hop diplomacy and entrepreneurship as a focus was different for me, but like a great learning experience. And the connections that I made on that um, trip, I'm still I'm still talking to those people. We're yep. still like working together on things and uh, yeah I mean it's it's really awesome so I was just gonna say I highly recommend it uh, you guys are taking applications right yeah now. Ab absolutely applications are open we'll go ahead and we'll drop it in uh, put, on the put, web so we'll yeah, put it in the little we'll link it yeah we'll that's what we'll guys do in for the application but I, yeah recommend it please it, do yeah it's a great we're program. looking for movers um, aerosol artists DJs, beat makers, beatboxers, MCs, please do. Yeah. Why? All right. Let's let's talk about popping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. I feel like I'm being set up right now. He's like, let's talk about popping. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So most of the people that follow, you know, the live stuff. I mean, the YouTube link will, will be a little bit of everybody but most of the people like want to talk about popping so we're going to talk a little bit about popping let's do that okay so my my question for you is from when you started seeing popping in the beginning till today like what have you seen change are there some strengths and weaknesses in what's going on today like is yeah. It, yeah. What, what do you think of the state of popping I guess you could so in context you know like I'm old, so, like, I'm not from, like, popping culture, like, um, hey, there's this new thing that I just found out about. You know, it was just kind of going on around me, like, as a kid, you know, a little kid. Like, I've been dancing since I was three and competing in competitions since I was four or five years old. So, like, I was surrounded by people moving and what I call now, like, the popping aesthetic. Because, like, you know, people, not everybody's informed, you know, so they just know what they watch on TV, yeah. you know. So, like, once, when I became a student of it, and I started breaking it down and really seeing, learning all of these different forms, these different disciplines and what people were doing in different places, you know, like, it really opened up my eyes, and, and then it became something that, like, I was just absolutely crazy about. It was like a, like a puzzle, you know, like, that I was really good at, and I could put them together really quick, you know. So a lot of people, like, now, 
like know me as like a house dancer. Yeah. Like, and a lot of people don't remember me. Well, didn't know me. Yeah. Like in the '90s, you know, yeah. like um, when I was competing with popping, yeah. you know, and uh, Thomas was my my right hand man. Like he just was teaching me everything. Yeah. Like just really like. For yeah. for anybody that doesn't know Thomas, he's a, a Danish dancer from the old school crew Out of Control, mm -hmm. um, and he was Steen, Mr. Steen's popping partner, and uh, yeah, so. If you know Steen, then you got to know about Thomas. And if you know about European like dance history, he's a very important figure oh, yeah. in the history of European popping. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, I've watched a lot of things happen over the years, right? And right now, popping is like, in my opinion, in this beautiful place because mm. there's so much information like yeah. readily accessible and there's so many people who are no longer hiding man if i would have known who will randolph was mm. in 1987 <laughs> dude do you know like really yeah. like but you guys can go and you guys can watch pop tart like online you can yeah. just pull that out dude, we got that yeah that's you know how many of us would have loved that opportunity as kids so i feel like it's great that you have all these ideas and all these people representing their communities. I think the problem in popping, as I see it, is the way people treat each other. Mm. You know, like, and I hate to, like, be a smart ass about it, but sometimes it's like a old, broke-ass kung fu movie. You know, my style is better than yours. Yeah, right. You know, it's like, come on, guys, man. Really? You know, the idea that, like, people cannot like a certain thing yeah. And that's just okay with someone? Like, yeah. no, I just like this. I like to do it like this. You know? Like, people do not have... It seems that in, in a lot of popping communities, people don't have the ability to, like, accept or even, like, tolerate that people just might be different. Mm. And they might like different things. Yeah. So when it comes to, like, competitions and performance and how you monetize... You know, these art forms, you know, it gets real complicated. Yeah. And it gets really, really ugly for absolutely no reason. Yeah. So, and I don't think that's particularly just the popping community. Right. But it's because it's something in a community I've been in for so long and that I love so much, it's so real. Yeah. You know, it's like, damn, man, y'all tripping <laughs> over nothing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's silly, but... Yeah. It is what it is. Like, you you can't fix everything. But that's what I, I think. I think, like, people just need to treat each other better. Yeah. You know? Like, it's... And stay offline. <laughs> yeah. Like, talking shit. Yeah. You know? We don't, we don't need to do that. Like, you can always show up. You know? You can get down with people. Like, you can build, let people be them. Yeah. You know? That's, that's kind of like... I won't say my pet peeve, you know, that's me seeing a problem yeah. in a community and I watch how people treat each other, yeah. you know, and how people kind of like really systematically erase other communities in their contributions. Yeah. Like, how do how you do that? Yeah. Especially people of color, please. All right. Like, <laughs> since, since when do does anybody want to be the oppressor? Yeah. You know, like, you want to be like, oh, yeah, that community don't exist. Yeah. Oh, they don't have a contribution. Yeah. Only because you like what you like? Come on. I mean, you, you've done plenty of community building. Is How do you navigate around people that are so close to, like, other perspectives and ways? Like, yeah. like what, do, what should people try to do to, like, a lot of people that follow probably my channel might relate to me in some way of like, oh, I feel like I'm a little different as a popper and mm -hmm. I don't get recognized for that or I don't win the battle or I don't do this. And mm -hmm. so then there's this pressure for them to like adapt to this, whatever these, these mentalities that are very narrow. Yeah. So how do, how do people navigate in a world like that where it's like, this is the way, my way. <laughs> you, know? you just have to respect who you are and where you come from. Yeah. You know, and the things that you're learning, like, as something that something someone passed on to you. Like, this is a tradition. 
like someone pass a tradition to you. Even people who are like, oh, I have no real teachers, I'm self-taught. If you watch on YouTube, yeah, you learn. somebody <laughs> taught you. you. You know, like you didn't just <laughs> manifest dopeness. Like that's not the way that works, right? You know, so like take that tradition and show it some respect. You know, and, re and respect yourself and be like, hey, you know, I'm putting this on my body. I'm putting all this work into it. Like, I'm training this many hours a day. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm teaching. Like, I'm, you know, uh, performing. I'm battling. When you put that much work into something, like, show it some love, man, and show it some respect. Mm -hmm. You know, and nobody gets to take that from you. Yeah. No one gets to tell you that you cannot be who you are. Right. I don't care how dope they are. Yeah. You know? Like, even at the thing that you love, they don't get to tell you that, you know, you don't get to actualize, like, your dreams and your goals. Right. Like, you just, we just have to stop letting bullshit, like, come in, like, on some adult shit, right? Like, yeah. like grown folks. Like, why are we allowing other people to come into our communities, like, and tell us what's wrong with us? and what we shouldn't be doing and even less than that like what type of movement we should be doing right. I mean it's it, to me it's a no brainer yeah you know, but it, it starts with respecting yourself because yeah. if you don't respect yourself man you'll let people treat you anyway mm -hmm. you know and when you know those people who are doing that shit like don't stop substantiating and stop letting it be okay yeah like, you ain't got to go out and, and fight them or go online and talk crap about them. But, you know, you can at least not condone it. Yeah. You know? Like, you can just be like, no, nah, I'm, nah, I'm not about that. Yeah. That's them. You know? Let's create something different. Or I will treat you differently here. You know? Yeah. Like, that's the way I see it, man. Like, hope that answer your question. Yeah, no, definitely. Um so also on this channel, we've talked about um, the dance being like an African-American traditional dance, like black dance, black art, um, cultural appropriation, and uh, being a guest within a culture. Mm. That's something that, you know, I learned a lot from you about all of those topics. I think even the way that I think about cultural appropriation is based on like certain ways you've explained it at different times. But maybe I feel like that's such a it's such a topic that we don't talk about enough mm -hmm. so you know since I have you on the the series I I'd definitely like to hear like how you feel about that in hip-hop and urban dance like these things and what's going on with that you know cultural appropriation is it's such a, a complex you know topic and you know I feel like there's not enough time in the day to unpack yeah. all of this stuff. <clears throat> but I feel like cultural appropriation has a few, a couple of things that are prevalent, you know, in that thing. Um, being removed from the community of practice, you know, yeah. like... In plain language, you do movement that has origins in African American communities, but you don't know no African Americans. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's a little bit suspect. <laughs> yeah. You know. So that thing's present, and this thing of disrespect has is a has a hint or some blatant form mm. of disrespect on that scale. It might be slight, you know, but there's some type of disrespect, mm. you know, that's involved in that. You know, there's some examples of, of things I've heard people be like, you know, some people are just at a place where if anybody outside of community of practice or origin is doing an art form, people are like, oh yeah, you're appropriating it. You know, I don't come from that school. You know, I don't, I don't believe that. My experience, you know, like, if we're being honest, we have to look. As we have this conversation in English, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're having this conversation in English. Like, yeah. so, am, am I appropriating English? Mm -hmm. You know? 
I don't know. What, what is that? You know, like not everyone has access, you know, to their places of origin, mm -hmm. their languages of origin, yeah. like, or their art forms that's connected with it. So we become a part of the environments that we live in. Yeah. You know, I have friends that I grew up with that, you know, were white and, you know, Filipino, like, and, you know, they hung out and lived in our communities. So we're a lot alike. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. But they're not disrespectful. And they don't talk down where they come from. Mm. And just because they're in a room full of people that look just like them, you know, they don't start talking down and get all racist and, mm. you know, crap like that. So, you know, I don't know, man. Like, it's a very complex topic. But, like, you know, make no mistake about it. Like, appropriation is minstrelsy. Yeah. Like, and, and we should pay attention to that. Yeah. That's clear. Yeah. You know, like, and we should be mindful. But I think to learn to learn and be a part of an art form is to respect the community that it comes from. Yeah. You know, like the communities, excuse me, that it comes from. And, like, try to be a, a servant, yeah. you know, or an ambassador to what you're learning. Like, and, you know, we, we push a lot here that we are tradition bearers. And... With that comes this thing of responsibility and accountability. Yeah. So the things that we're doing, like, take care of it, you know, because it's, it's a gift, you yeah. know. Like, there's a lot of people, you know, who have worked their asses off to create something that we all can enjoy. Like, yeah. so let's show some love, like, and show some respect. Yeah, even with, like, career opportunities, like, the fact that I as a white person and somebody that um, started popping in 99, 2000, mm -hmm. can be like teaching and like now, just now in the past year and a half, just doing teaching with dance. Yeah. Like people that paved the way for me, like they didn't have even that opportunity. Yeah. So it's like, I'm, I'm always recognizing that I'm standing on their shoulders in some way. And that yeah. if it wasn't for the, all the years they put in and the way that they showed people what it was and expressed their art and popularized it more in the world, like it wouldn't even get to this point where like I have people in the online class that is just, you know, I got a guy from Jacksonville, Florida, you know, and like he doesn't even pop, but he just wants to learn how, you know, like people yeah. are interested in this thing yeah. and they're just reaching out and want to learn. So it's like, <clears throat> I feel like, my job is like to, to teach about legacy and the connection and, and the culture and where it comes from and connect those people to the people that I'm connected with too in those communities. Um, mm -hmm. Because otherwise I feel like I would just be like a product or a brand and I feel like hip hop and urban dance has become such a brand and a product. It almost feels like if you're successful enough, no one can say anything to you anymore. <laughs> you know, like, like, like you're not really doing the dance or you're not really like, that's not how it's supposed to go. Oh, but I have a million followers and I'm on all these big shows yeah. and stuff. And it's like, it gets to a point where it's like, it's just a product now. And if it's a popular product, you can't say anything to that person because <clears throat> they're getting what they want out of it, I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean, but that's... People make those rules for themselves. It doesn't mean that that we have to follow them. You know, like I don't, I don't care how well you do. You know, I'll flip it. You know, and there's people that I work with in the acoustic in the acoustic country blues community, like these these uh, musicians, um, singers, dancers. That you know, I'm doing better than they are. You know, like I've been able to you know, amass some privilege, yeah. you know. So why wouldn't I give back to them? Yeah. Why wouldn't I, like, check in on them, spend some time with them, give them some gigs, you know. Why yeah. would I not, you know, if I'm making money or if I'm gaining from them, why can't I help them too? Yeah. You know, like, this mentality, like, strives for healthy communities. Like when you're doing this kind of thing, like in trying to do something good and having a, a good influence, 
yeah. like on on people. And what a lot of people don't understand is like, I don't care how high you get, yeah. like there's still a down, man. Mm. There's still a down. Like, and you know, it doesn't matter how well you dance, how many battles you win, you know, how many likes you get, how many followers you get. The bottom line is like, this is living art and it's growing. And you show me somebody dope, and I'll show you four more people that are on their way to be just that good. So if you think that you can sustain like the type of fame and like forever, mm. take it from somebody who's 45 years old. My body don't move like it did at 22. Like, but my mind is better. Mm. You know, my mind is better. I can stretch that. Mm. You know, I can do some mind boogaloo. How about that? <laughs> You know, I'll do some of that, some of that mind boogaloo. But like, I think it's it's easier, you know, to just think about the the notoriety, the fame, and the fortune. Like, yeah. you know, it's easy to do that. Yeah. But that does not last forever. Like, and you need some other tools. Mm -hmm. You need some other tools. Like, and if you think that you can ignore everybody else and just be dope because you're you, dude, your time is limited. Mm. That's it. That's just history. Yeah. Look back at it, you know? And all of these people creating these separate communities, you know, like with these weak ass foundations, you know? How the hell are you gonna like build communities while you're tearing other communities down? Yeah. How does that work? Like, it don't work. Karma's underrated. <laughs> no, I'm serious, man. <laughs> it's underrated. Like, people people don't get it. Like, that's how that works. Mm -hmm. Everything's a cycle. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to rise up. But there's always a down part, man. Mm -hmm. You know, but in communities that are healthy, you know, people are watching each other, taking care of each other, you know, trying to do right by each other. Yeah. Dude, man, you know, you don't have those problems. I don't feel like I'm appropriating culture when the person that I learned from, you know, is supporting me and what I'm doing, yeah. you know, and I'm supporting them, yeah. you know. I don't feel like, you know, I'm out there in the world alone when, you know, because when I jump in the cypher, you know, I got four people standing behind me and be like, yeah, let's go, yeah. you know. Or when I'm preparing for a show, you know, somebody, I can call somebody and say, hey, yeah, can you help me with this piece? Or could you choreograph something? You know, it doesn't matter. It's community. Yeah. It's it's how how a tribe survives. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we take our, away those elements that keep us healthy. You know, and that stuff is all connected with like, you know, appropriation and like, you know, it's isolating. Mm -hmm. Like we're segregating, we're isolating, mm -hmm. like each other, and it just comes back to get us. Should we uh, check some yeah, comments sure. and questions, maybe? Yeah. All right. We're going to go. I don't know if we have any questions, but we're going to check out and see if we do. Jay says, that's how I feel about popping. I grew up with it around me, but learning about it has been so eye-opening. Hikari likes mind boogaloo. <laughs> hey, Hikari, what's up? She likes that one. All right, let's check the YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Koflo says, leather must be cold out there. <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> it's cold. It is. <laughs> what you talking about, man? Yeah, it's cold out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gorilla Will says he was one of those young people. He's probably, I guess he's talking about when we were talking about mentorship. Uh, Mason Dracos, that's actually my online student from Jacksonville. Um, any tips for finding tools to build the community, especially when you're the minority? 
I'm a little curious if you're still on there what you mean by uh, when you're the minority and maybe a little bit more of what you're trying to do. I mean, he shared some things with me that there's just no scene there. Like in Jacksonville, he, there's, there's no there's no scene, there's nothing going on, so he's trying to like create something. He'd organ okay, so he's saying he wants to organize dancers. Tips for community building to organize dancers. It's not his culture. I, I think he probably means uh, like he's never done it before. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think patience is important. You know, like when I've lived in communities where like um, when I was younger that I was like one of the only people like doing the dance, you know, like so I wasn't, I didn't really make it a goal to build a community around it, you know. Of course I wanted to find people who did it too. Yeah. Like so start small, man. Start just, small. yeah, just find somebody that will let you be you, you know, like. There's a, a lot of people who want to build communities, but like I didn't, I didn't start Assassins DC or Urban Artistry like after dancing for a couple of years. You know it. You know I've been dancing my whole life, and you know I had a huge community of people. Like yeah. everybody, like like supported us. Yeah. You know when you look at the first like, you know Urban Artistry promo video with all those dancers in there, there's yeah. all my family. You know that wanted to be in the trailer. They're like, yeah, dude, we want people to know that we support you, that this is, you know, so that wanting to start like uh, a community without the experience to do that can actually be a dangerous thing. Yeah. You know, like, and I, I've seen that, yeah. you know, happen before, you know, and sometimes it even happens here. You know, I've heard like younger people in, in our community being like, Oh, I want to start a thing and want to bring the community together. Yeah. You know, it's like, what? What? So let me get this straight. The way that you're going to bring the community together is you're going to do something separate from the community? Yeah. And tell people to come to it? No. The way you bring community together is you bring community together and you have dialogue. Yeah. You know, and you do problem solving, like, yeah. if that's the issue. Yeah. You know? So I say, man... Enjoy being a student, like enjoy learning, like and exploring, like not just the art form, but how your how your body and your spirit responds to it, man. And then make those moves when, when you when you got the backbone and you got the foundation. Yeah. You know, like because it's it you know, and I'm gonna say this: <laughs> <laughs> if anybody thinks that building a community is an easy thing. Like, you're wrong. <laughs> it's not easy. It's a, a lot of a lot of pains, man. Like that stuff ain't easy. And you know, there's no perfect way to do it. You know, and you know, I'm learning how to do it better. Yeah. Every day, like trying, 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 trying. Right. So, take your time, man. Dance. Yeah. Like, have a good time. Be responsible. Yeah. You go over to the Instagram. Hikari says, uh, how do you celebrate your own culture while being a guest in another culture? Um, that's something we've been talking about lately because, you know, we get on the conversation a lot um, about the essence of the style, you mm -hmm. know, and like traditionally it being black dance. And I think this is a question that a lot of people have about like, how do you truly represent your culture and who you are in the dance uh, if it's proper to, you know, respect the traditions and try to move in the spirit of, you know, African Americans. Yeah, I mean, man, that's there's a long answer <laughs> to that. Um, but I, I think it's safe to say that there's not like one way to do that. You know, yeah. it's like we don't we don't leave ourselves like, you know, we just are who we are. You know, like, and to learn another culture and learn something from another community and to be a part of that, like, you know, I think that's a healthy thing, yeah. you know, and to do it responsibly is the point. And just because you enjoy what 
someone in another community is doing doesn't mean that you don't come from something that's valuable you know yeah so maybe you should also learn about your culture's traditional dances and mm. and musics and you know because i if i believe that you know embodied movement you know we all have it yeah. you know like and sometimes we're trying to move to music that maybe our bodies don't understand yeah you know and we got to work we got to practice we got to train yeah. to refine that and some people just get it easy right you know like i i say like it's the answer to your question akari is you just do it <laughs> just be yourself just be present like in other communities mm. you're not offending other communities because you're you <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, you aren't offending other communities because you're a person that's from some other place. Mm -hmm. You know, you're offending other communities <coughs> when you're offending other communities. And that's specific behavior. That's not like just because you exist. Yeah. Yeah, I also feel like... That's, that's oh, yeah, we got another question. But let me add like, yeah, one thing. I, I feel like... Um, for me, that's also been something I think about a lot, but I, it kind of naturally manifested throughout the years. I'm like, oh, there's certain things that, as I'm learning these traditions and these dances, there's certain things that feel more right on my body. There's certain movements that just started to naturally happen. Like, mm -hmm. I like lines and like I like you know details and and gliding and things where I'm up on my toes a lot and I, I started to say well that looks natural I mean that feels good and I would just try to keep channeling in more into what was like naturally working and I, I think that might have something to do with just me being me in some way and just putting what feels right out there mm -hmm. and that's sort of the idea of like being you within a dance but but yeah I mean <coughs> You're right, like, we're always, we're learning about other people's cultures a lot, and if we can respect ourselves, I like that thing, if we can respect who you are and where you come from, mm -hmm. and understand that, then it'll be easier to respect and understand other cultures, and, you know, if you're in those environments enough, you can become a part of that culture as well, like, that's such an American thing to be yeah. a part of so many different types of things. Actually, that's innately American, like, that's... Who we are, like we're mixed with a lot of different things. Yeah. And I've been to, you know, like sometimes a lot of us identify as this, you know, this blank form of of African descent, you know, mm. like or just black, right? But when you start traveling and going to different communities, and you know, m the time I've spent in African countries, man, I've realized, you know like the things that I fall short on, mm. you know, but I've also been able to see myself in other people's cultures, you know, and, and feel like, you know, that thing was a part of me. Yeah. So. <coughs> we got, so the, uh, the Instagram live is going to end in about a minute here. So if you guys are on Instagram, just go over to the um, Funk and Focus YouTube live and we're going to keep going. We're going to take Caden's question um, and then we'll answer it on the uh, off of the Instagram. So Caden asks, how do you guys feel looking at street dance in other countries where the dance has been pushed highly on a technical level but is missing the original soul essence of the dance and how would you go about educating people on that matter? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I believe that like communities that aren't here in America, like in the United States, lack the essence or the soul. Mm. You know, I don't know if I, I believe that, you know. I know I've heard people say it, mm. you know, but you know, I've lived in Europe and yeah, <laughs> there, there's a lot of things that we don't know about any art form. Like, I don't know everything there is to know about every art form. And I, I don't think anybody else can say <clears throat> that they do. Mm. You know, so I think, like, what, what is the essence? 
Mm. Like to me, the essence is is honesty and and clarity, mm. you know, and and your purpose. Like to me, that's essence. Mm. You know, like people who move, you know, and you can tell that like they meant that. Mm. You know, that yeah. was intentional. Like that wasn't like. And then you can see other people who are like guessing through movement, and they look unsure. Mm. Like and and that's that's global, man. You know, that's that's not just in in Europe, you know, like you know, I've I've been I've been around mm. <laughs> and I know some people like from all over the world, you know, who are supposed to have the quote unquote essence. They don't got it. Do you, do you feel like people that are really good at, at mimicking like for instance, like a lot of poppers feel like a lot of the Asian countries are good at mimicking um, popping, but that they lack like funkiness. Do you think that uh, that they, even if they're mimicking, if they have what you said, honesty and uh, purpose in mimicking that, does that mean that they have the essence of the soul? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Um, yeah. So. I don't know, like, people who mimic that way, like, and who, I know what you mean, and I know there are people who, who mimic movement, like, to the T, but then we're going back to this thing of, like, being connected to the communities that the movement comes from. Yeah. If you don't have context to the movement that you're doing, it's going to come across like that. Yeah. You know, like, it's some dancers you can look at, and you can tell who they're copying. Right. You know? Like, everything from, like, the Pac-Man face to the over-exaggerated <laughs> hit. You know? You know what I'm talking about. You know? And you can, you can tell. <clears throat> no. You know, don't make, me, don't make me do the Pac-Man face. You know, you know the Pac-Man. Do the, do the Pac-Man. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Like, so... <laughs> that's the Pac-Man face, yeah. So, like, when, when people are not connected to communities and, like, they don't have context of what they're doing and, they're just, and they just have a technical standard, like, what else you got? You know, like, on a, on a scale of, like, grading someone, like, why bother? You know, if they're technically proficient, they're technically proficient. You know, if they don't... If in, on their path, like they don't have the essence, yeah, give them some time, man. Mm. Don't don't dismiss them. You know, like not everybody has those tools. Mm. You know, like I'm sure there's some dope ass like dancers in you know Albania that that ain't never been to the South Bronx. So you know, like as b boys or b girls, like do they not have the essence mm. because they haven't been to that place? You know, you try. Yeah. You try. You do what you can. If you can't, you read, you know, you watch, you talk to people. You just try to learn. Like, the essence can be a lot of things. And actually, if we're being really, like, serious about it, that can be a thing that, like, really just, like, it's like dangling a bone in front of people. It can be divisive, mm-hmm. you know, and it could be, and sometimes people use that to weaponize a culture, you know, like, they, People will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're dope. You're technically proficient, but yeah. you don't have the essence. Uh-huh. What's the essence? Yeah. Can you buy that at a store? Mm-hmm. Like, are they teaching that at the local dance school? Mm-hmm. Like, can I take a class in, in Essence 101? Like, what is that? You know, it's the same argument and discussion like people were having years ago about funky. What's that? Yeah. You know, like, what's funky? Right. You know? Like the funk, the funk is the essence. Okay, then show it to me. Yeah. Like, how do you itemize that? How do you break that down? Right. I think it's subjective. Yeah. To be honest. Mm. I think it's subjective. Yeah. Let's see what else. Uh, Mason is asking if there's any other videos or materials to read about community building. Yeah. Sure. Hit me up. There you go. Direct message me. I'll send you some stuff. There you go. All right. Uh, 
for Junius if he has more videos where he speaks about this kind of, okay, yeah, he's asking about that. Gorilla Will, I met Junius in 2006 at GMU and what he showed slash taught has definitely helped build the 757 and 804 scenes. Dude, thanks, so, girl. I appreciate that. Like, for those of you who don't know, like, that's home for me. I'm born in Virginia Beach, raised in Norfolk, you know, and, uh, you know, I've always tried to find ways to, to, to give back to the places I'm from. And, and, Will, you guys have been instrumental, like, and I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to do that. It means a lot, you know. Um, there wasn't a lot of people um, back home, you know, who were interested in, in learning from the community that I was involved in, you know, um, until I met you guys. And you guys have, uh, have done yourselves well. So thank you. Yeah. Um, last thing, popping pet peeves. Things that we can just throw away. So there's, <laughs> there's got to be a few things we can just get rid of that that thing. We can. I mean, we know that there's the Pac-Man mouth now, but there's got to be some other you know, popping pet peeves that we can just. Oh get rid man, of that. that's maybe that's not working out for it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look in the camera when I say this, because I don't want to be misunderstood. Okay. Stop faking waves. <laughs> Just stop. You know what I'm talking about. I don't even got to show it to you. You know what I'm talking about. Stop faking waves. You can wiggle your hand in front of your arm all you want. That is not an isolation. Like, stop faking it. Like, just do it. And just forget the torso. Forget all this. All this just be gone. Yeah. People just be winding up arms. Like, just wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop faking waves. We just throw that out. Like, just technique. This is where you need to leave the essence alone <laughs> and get technically proficient. Yeah, like, exactly. Work on that. Leave that essence alone. What's yours? Oh, mine is the, um, mine is the crotch popper. What? <laughs> You've never seen the guys that hit with their crotch. Oh, my God. And it's like they're humping the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, and they wear, you know, they wear the, like, the striped dress pants, so it's just real loose and <laughs> <laughs> real visible. <laughs> just crotch popping the whole time. Just, <laughs> like they're just humping, around, humping around the dance floor. And it's a mixture of the extra leg pop with the crotch at the same time. It's like you got the leg <laughs> blasting and the crotch going. And they're just hitting. So it, it kind of falls into the category of just why are you hitting so hard every single beat of the whole solo? Like they might as well just go in a circle and just go like this from now on. And that's, that's because people keep telling them that if they're not hitting, they're not doing the dance. Oh, my God. You know, so that's... making everybody so whack. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Christ. Yeah, no, it's a thing. There's, and I'm not going to call anyone out, but there's a few oh my very goodness. popular crotch poppers. <laughs> very highly esteemed crotch poppers. <laughs> that's so bad. Mason Draco says his pet peeve is crappy popper music. <laughs> crappy music. Koflo says <laughs> Roman tuts, nickel stops, and two different material types used in their fit. One for their shirt and one for their slides. <laughs> yeah, the clothing. It's so bad. Oh, the clothing game. Ah, oh, man. It's even, like, popular to be a little bit, like, grungy now you know yeah. like like ripped jeans and like ripped shoes i've seen and like this <laughs> bum popper like the homeless homeless pop <laughs> 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 that's, that's uh, that. christopher's bringing it back to a little bit more serious he says is that true if you're not hitting you're not doing the dance maybe that has to do with the categorization yeah. 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 If 
you're not hitting, you're not doing a dance. I that's, mean, that's, some people say that, you know, like, you know, that, that's their prerogative. But, you know, I'm not from that school, you know, so I'm not going to tell other people what to think, you know, like, but I, I disagree with that, you know. Yeah, yeah, me, me too. I mean, I, the music calls for your body to pop in some way, mm -hmm. it, it kind of, if you're truly like listening to the music, your body will stop and pose and it, it might make you a little bit more mechanical. Like mechanics is important for the dance. Like the stop motion is mm -hmm. important, you know, like square frames and shapes. Like it's, it's a dance of like isolations and shapes and stops and footwork. And, you know, I don't, I try not to put the stop motion effect as the most important element of mm. the whole thing. I feel like there's a lot of important elements and yeah. and they all make popping dope, you know. So that's like that's kind of what I'm looking for when I see somebody doing the style is like what more than the pop do they have? Yeah. <laughs> I'm always looking for what more. Well, I mean, than that. we've seen in competitions and also in shows like what happens when hitting is the main theme, you know, like and like 15 minutes into like the event, people are falling asleep. Yeah. You know, it's just like, dude, come on, man. Yeah. Like, let's see some range of motion and, and ideas and right. like creativity, you know, like there's a I think that you don't have to like forget like where you come from and like where the dance has been mm -hmm. to create new things like you can you yeah. can be creative and you can create new things that are that you feel like is specific to you you know without dismissing everything else yeah. you know like it's you can be holistic in your approach or you can not like it's up to you yeah. you know Um, all right, I think uh, I don't think we have any more questions or comments. So, um, is there anything else you wanted to add in general, or no, man? Just thanks for um, inviting me out to like to talk and uh, anytime, man. I'd love to sit in and chop it up. Yeah, like we're gonna do. Uh, uh, we should do a talk where we're like, like sampling beers like yeah and go to our favorite breweries and yeah. like you know that would be really cool we'll pull that out like and we'll make sure that we we'll pour a bunch of beer that that Cody won't drink <laughs> like alright yeah that would be cool but yeah thank you for, for being on uh, it's always nice to have you share knowledge and share your perspective and your experience and uh, yeah I mean Let's do it again. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cool. All right, y'all. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in.